Imagine if you could redesign your street. What changes would you make? When people are asked about the issues they dislike in their neighborhoods and what improvements they'd want, traffic-related complaints are often at the top of the list. Nobody wants to be kept awake at night by the constant sound of cars passing by, and no one wants their children to play next to busy roads. But does living in a dense city mean we have to accept air and noise pollution from traffic as a part of life? This is a street in a dense city, and so is this one. But how is it so quiet? Where is all the traffic? There are plenty of parked cars, but nobody is driving. This transformation is the result of a simple yet incredibly effective urban planning strategy in the Netherlands. The division of public space into two distinct categories. Traffic areas and residential areas. Traffic areas prioritize the flow of vehicles, while residential areas focus on enhancing livability. Creating this division in a city is arguably the most critical step to improving urban life. No other country has implemented this hierarchy of public space with the same consistency and effectiveness as the Netherlands. While other cities are making changes in the right direction, the nationwide approach in the Netherlands remains unparalleled. So, why do we need residential areas in the first place? How can we design them effectively? And what can we learn from the Dutch experience? Most streets worldwide are designed with cars as the central focus. When it comes to redesigning streets, discussions tend to revolve around parking and traffic flow, not often considering how to make streets safer for children or more accessible for everyone, not just drivers. There's no denying that cars are a convenient mode of transport, but when most urban streets are built around the idea that car accessibility is for most, the results are clear. Constant traffic, air and noise pollution, and vast amounts of public space dedicated to cars. This approach doesn't just impact livability, it also has severe consequences for road safety. In the past, the Netherlands faced similar challenges. During the 1970s, rising car traffic, along with increasing air and noise pollution, was one of the reasons that led to deteriorating city centers. Road fatalities surged, sparking public outrage. A protest movement called Stop the Kindermord, which translates to Stop the Child Murder, emerged, driven by the fact that children couldn't safely play on the streets. Fast forward a few decades, and the Netherlands now boasts some of the safest and most livable streets in the world, where children can safely get around on their own, on foot, or by bicycle. Since the 90s, the sustainable safety policy systematically aims to reduce the likelihood of car crashes by implementing a clear hierarchy of roads and categorizing spaces into traffic and residential areas. Traffic areas are streets where the traffic function is prioritized. This is a space that people use to get from A to B. These streets are designed with separate bicycle infrastructure due to increased speeds and traffic volumes. Residential areas, on the other hand, are designed with traffic calming in mind, prioritizing livability over vehicle flow. Where a traffic area intersects with a residential area, a continuous pavement is preferred. The pavement and the bike lane stay at the same level, making it easier for people to cross. Sloped curbs act as speed bumps, signaling to drivers that they are entering or leaving a residential area. Streets in these areas are often narrower and paved with bricks, to slow down cars and signal the vehicles are guests in this space. The key to creating a safe and livable residential area is eliminating through traffic. This can be achieved by designing one-way streets or dead ends for cars, ensuring that only drivers with a destination in the area use the streets. When a street isn't constantly filled with motor traffic, it becomes a much more pleasant environment. Residents can still access their homes by car, but through traffic is restricted and redirected to designated traffic areas. While through traffic may occasionally be permitted in residential areas, this should be the exception. In an ideally planned residential area, only those with a specific destination within the neighborhood would use the streets. The goal is for residents driving outside their neighborhood to take the shortest possible route through residential streets and quickly connect to a traffic area, minimizing the impact on the residential zone. 
With low speeds and minimal traffic, children can safely play without parents worrying that an SUV is going to run them over. Meanwhile, in many other parts of the world, children have largely lost their traditional freedom of movement, a loss largely driven by the rise in motorized traffic. The ability of children to move around independently is crucial for their healthy physical and mental development. It's no coincidence that Dutch children are often regarded as the happiest in the world. A significant factor is the thoughtful design of urban public spaces that take into account children's needs. In many parts of the world, cars are allowed to pass through most neighborhoods, with few traffic calming measures in place. This is evident in cities like Riga, Latvia. Many streets in the city center of Riga serve as thoroughfares for traffic, leading to increased air and noise pollution and more road crashes. The issues are very similar to that of Amsterdam in the 1970s. Vacant plots left undeveloped, several empty shops, and wide and straight roads designed solely around the car. As a result, most streets are unsafe and uninviting and aren't spaces where you'd really want to hang out, let alone live. Other factors play a role as well in the decline of the inner city, but the way that streets and public spaces are designed is perhaps the most significant. To create safer and more livable cities, a balance between car accessibility and livability is essential. This area in the city center experiences quite a bit of traffic, with drivers using them as shortcuts. This is also a great example of quick and affordable safety improvements, such as painted pedestrian crossings and the installation of flexi posts to narrow the roadway, making drivers slow down. Yet these measures alone are not enough. The surrounding streets remain too wide and most importantly, can be used by drivers to pass through. To create a truly livable and safe environment, these areas need to be converted into residential areas that restrict through traffic. Let's see what we can do. When we compare the amount of public space allocated to cars versus pedestrians, then balance becomes clear. We need to rethink this approach. We will start by allocating as little space as possible for cars by creating narrow streets. In the Netherlands, narrow streets are built not only because they are cheaper to build and maintain, but they are also safer. On wide streets, drivers tend to pay less attention and drive faster. Narrow streets, however, encourage drivers to slow down and pay more attention. With lower traffic volumes and a reduced speed limit of 30 km per hour, cars and bikes can comfortably share the road. Additionally, traffic calm streets allow people with mobility scooters to travel safely on the roadway. Ideally, residential areas should be as large as possible, ensuring that vulnerable groups like children and the elderly can navigate their surroundings without needing to cross a traffic area. To make further improvements, we will create a raised intersection so that everybody slows down and pays attention. By removing priority signage and allowing vehicles coming from the right to have the right of way, everybody must slow down and check for oncoming traffic. Another important consideration is parking. While residents do need places to park their cars, it's important to have space for greenery and other community uses. Let's put in several parking spots, but also plant plenty of trees and greenery to create a much more pleasant street. But if we replace just one of the parking spots with bicycle parking, we can accommodate parking for 10 bicycles instead of just one car. Bicycles can often take up too much space on pavements, so it's crucial to provide enough bicycle parking to maintain a walkable environment and encourage people to cycle. Another way to improve public spaces is by adding small front gardens that residents can take care of. This feature is common on Dutch streets, adding both greenery and aesthetic appeal. Adding seating areas such as benches and tables where people can gather further enhances the sense of community. Cafes can also set up outdoor tables, turning parts of a residential area into vibrant spaces. By narrowing streets, ensuring safer intersections, maintaining parking, while adding plenty of trees and greenery, and creating areas where people can gather, we have transformed a typical car-centric street into a livable space. By comparing the before and after, it's quite a difference. On which street would you rather live on? 
Not all streets need to serve as thoroughfares for traffic. To create more livable, accessible and safe cities, dividing public space into traffic and residential areas is crucial. While comprehensive street redesigns are ideal, even small changes like installing flexi posts or concrete barriers can make a significant impact. However, proper street redesigns remain the ultimate goal, and this next video will explore how they can be achieved.